What's up guys, Doug Polk from Upswing Poker here, and today we're going to talk about a subject that I think a lot of players get confused on. You know, it's not a simple subject, so I understand where people are coming from, but GTO against exploitative play has been something in the poker community for a long, long time. Now, we're going to talk about the differences between them, we're going to talk about what you should be looking for with both, which one's better, we'll talk about all that stuff, but I want to first off start off by defining them. When you're playing GTO, and, and I really dislike how often that term gets thrown around in the poker community, but if you were playing a true GTO style, standing for Game Theory Optimal, it would not be possible for your opponent to beat you. You would be always winning no matter what. However, it would not be the best way to beat an opponent. That's what exploitative is. So for example, in a GTO style, you would have a river, bluff to value bet ratio, where if your opponent called or folded, they would be indifferent amongst their decisions. But if you were playing exploitative style, you might bluff too much and they should call, or you might bluff too little and they should fold. So basically, these two styles of play are both valid styles. There are problems with both of them. And let's start off with talking about the problems of trying to play in a GTO way. First off, GTO does not, is not currently known. The actual game theory optimal strategy is not known right now. So what that means is, if you try to play a style that's kind of based around that, you're gonna end up having exploits anyway. You're gonna have some parts of your game that you know, are exploitable by your opponents because you are not playing a true GTO style. So the danger there is you start to play not caring what your opponents do when you're exploitable, and then if they start to actually see what you're doing and create a counter strategy, you can lose a lot of money. So you definitely have this drawback of by trying to play in that way, you could potentially open yourself up for exploitation. But playing in an exploitative way also has some drawbacks. If you only care about what your opponent is doing, you forego the ability to bluff in some situations, you might guess wrong, and that's I think one of the biggest problems people have in poker today, is that they guess about what they think their opponent's going to do, and then when they're wrong, it actually ends up costing them a lot of money. So often on the river, um, you know, let's say I'm playing micro stakes on a Twitch stream, and so often on the river, I get, the action gets to me, I'm going to bluff, and people will say in the chat, why would you bluff? Your opponent is just going to call, and they really don't have good information to make that assumption, because that's really what it is. It's an, an assumption. Now, here's the thing. If they're right, you can, pro you can more profitably bet the river by only value betting, but if they're wrong, you lose this ability to bluff that you would have made more money with. So it's a dangerous game with the exploitative side because by trying to guess what they're going to do, you put yourself at risk. And a good example of that would be, let's say you're playing rock, paper, scissors, and someone's, you think they're gonna throw rock, so you decide you're gonna throw paper. Well now, if your opponent knows that you think they throw rock a lot, then they could go the counter to paper, which is scissors, and beat you. So in those situations, both of these things have drawbacks, which is why the upswing style of play, what we generally advocate, is a blend between the two. You know, I personally lean at the start of matches towards playing a more theoretical based style because I put a lot of work into my game to make sure that it's a balanced approach where no matter, you know, whether I'm playing an opponent that's aggressive or passive or loose or tight, it'll probably be winning against whatever they do. And then as I gain more information, I like to move over to a little more of an exploitative style. But I'm not really one of those guys that really just fully commits to a massive exploitative style because then counters open up. Let's say, for example, you're playing an opponent and let's say you're playing heads up no limit. And when he opens, he folds to a ton of three bets. Well, the most extreme counter, you know, exploitative counter to that you could do would be to three bet him every hand, just print money, right? You just, every hand he opens, you three bet him and just the money rolls in. But then what happens when he realizes this guy is just three betting me with any hand? Well, now all of a sudden three betting becomes really bad. So this guessing game from both players kind of ensues where when either player wants to get really exploitative, the other player can then counter them and the game kind of goes around and around, whereas if you were playing a more theoretical based style the whole time, you probably would be winning. 
Now, there's certainly some factors to consider, such as the game environment. If you're playing in a game with a lot of recreational players that are quite bad, you probably don't want to play a very game theory based style. I mean, you should still use some elements of it, but it might make you more money to try and figure out what each player is up to and then create counters to it that you know are profitable. For example, let's say you're playing in a full ring game with a lot of with a lot of recreational players, and someone just seems to limp in with bad hands and raise good hands. Well, then a good exploitative adjustment to that would be to start raising their limp with a lot of holdings, because that way, when they limp, you're more likely to take the pot down, and their hand is probably weak. But then the problem again starts that other players at the table could note that you're doing that, and start three betting you very light. And then you could, of course, tighten up. So it kind of always, if the adjustment game starts to happen, it always comes back to trying to play good, fundamentally sound poker. But the point still remains that that player is quite weak when they limp, so you should be raising them more aggressively than the other opponent. So we're always going to try and be a little in between both of these sides of play when we talk about our strategy. You know, when we talk about the strategy recommended in the Upswing Lab, we're talking about using a strategy that is going to be good no matter what but still does care what your opponents are up to. You can't really just go all in on one side in today's day and age. Players are too good. And if anything, I would tell you to lean more towards a theoretical based style because it'll do better against more opponents. But if you don't have an ability to see what your opponent is doing and make some adjustments, that's also bad. That's also bad play on your part because you could make more money by making some simple adjustments. Now, I like to do a little version, my own version of adjusting. I like to adjust a little bit. You know, if someone seems like they're calling too much, I like to bluff just a bit less. You know, that way, I'll still run some bluffs on them and potentially get them to fold their hand, but I'm not overdoing it to let them adjust, and also it's harder to catch on. And that's one thing I really like about some subtle small adjustments. If you want to bluff too much, just bluff a little bit too much, and it's going to be harder for them to really catch on to what you're doing because they have to call first off, they have to see a few showdowns, and as long as the hands look reasonable, they might not think that you're, you're, you know, you're bluffing a little bit more. So both of those sides of play are important. There's people on the spectrum of both sides. You know, the more game theory based players are a little bit more like Ben Solsky. Uh, the more exploitative players historically have tended to be players a little more like Jungle Man. Uh, although I would say he's kind of more in the middle ground these days, plays a more theoretical style as well. Uh, but then some people that really just go with their instincts are people like Phil Hellmuth. And you know, I, I know it might sound a little bit like I'm, I'm joking just because online players tend to be a lot better than these live pros. But one thing that the, the live pros like Phil Hummuth are really good at are is that in a big field tournament, for example, they can make really good exploitative adjustments by figuring out what their what their you know opponents are doing and counter adjusting to it. So you know, someone like Phil Hellmuth might thrive in an environment with lots of recreational players in a big field tournament with a lot of reads, but he will be decimated in a, in a game theoretical showdown with a stronger player because the thing is the stronger player is going to know what plays make them more money in the long run. So that's the difference between the two. That's, those are the factors you should consider when looking at your own game. And if you're interested in this type of play and, and adding this into your own game, I'd have to recommend checking out the Upswing Poker Lab.